Are you ready? Yes, we're preparing to go live. Okay, great. I believe we are live. Uh, good morning. Today is Friday, March 24th, 2023, which is Maryland Day. And uh, <laughs> welcome to the Southern Maryland delegation meeting. We're very pleased that we're going to focus on the military, military alliances. Um, and I'm Delegate Edith Patterson, and I'm delighted to welcome our guests today. Uh, as noted, if you're looking at the number of participants, this is recorded. Uh, many of our colleagues are either um, with a press conference that was called by the president of the Senate, or they are doing community uh, service, for example, I know some of them in St. Mary's are attending a, a funeral. But at any rate, you're here and we're very really pleased that you are here to prevent, provide information for us. Um, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That was to have been shared by uh, Senator Ellis, but again, he's in route to be with the president. Let us bow our heads for a moment, please. Heavenly Father, as we gather here this morning, we want to thank you for your many blessings, for offering us the opportunity to share information and to listen and to learn. We ask for thy divine guidance and deliverance. In thy name we pray, amen. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I am. We are very pleased to welcome the alliances um, from Southern Maryland. And when we think about the alliances, I think of the many uh, opportunities you've given us to uh, partner, but more importantly, to uh, to expand and provide services to our various communities as well as to our nation. And for that, we're certainly grateful. Uh, as an aside, yesterday, uh, Governor Moore invited the veterans to have breakfast, which is pretty standard. He invites various caucuses, the Women's Caucus, the Black Caucus, the Latino, and of course the Veterans Caucus. But at this meeting, he was so passionate about his appreciation for the armed services, because as you know, he is a veteran. And he did share some insights regarding Charlotte Hall, which I will go over at the end of our discussion. But as you all know, we're very fortunate to have a commander in chief in Maryland, who is a veteran who understands the, the important role of the military. With that in mind, I'd like to introduce Steve Mitchell. Um, I told Kara, my chief of staff, I've known Steve for over 40 years, right? Yes, yes, ma'am. 40 years. Um, and it's simply, I'm impressed with his leadership, as well as Pam Frank, who I've known almost as long. And but Steve is a chair of board of directors for the Charles County Military Alliance Council. Pam is the Pam Frank is executive director for the Charles County Military Alliance. So first of all, to welcome the Charles County Military Alliance, welcome. All right, thank, thank you. you. So I think uh, the way we wanted to do this is Pam's gonna start off with the briefing. Uh, we've got, uh, you've got our slides, I hope. Is that right? Do, do you want me to drive on the slides? Or do we even need to? to see the slides at this point. You wanna, you want me to drive? Pam, can you hear me? Yes, you can hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I'm just not hearing anybody else say anything, so. Uh, we, we hear you. Okay. Uh, was that a question for Kara? Yes. Are you sharing your slides? Oh, I'm sorry, folks. I, I'm not able to do the slides as I'm doing the Zoom for everybody else, as well as answering a phone right now. 
Um, uh, that, Kara, that's control. okay. Let me see if I can pull it up. Okay, you have control to screen share. Okay, I'm I'm on it, but okay. I. While you're doing that, I know Senator Jackson. I'm. I thought you weren't here. Good morning. <laughs> as well as Senator Bailey. Uh, good, 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 good morning, uh, Madam Chair. Um, things changed a little, so I'll be here for the majority of your meeting. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, and Senator morning. Bailey, welcome as well, and Delegate Long, and Delegate Hart. Great. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to get, there we go. Is that, has that popped up on everybody's That's screen? Fine. It's fine, Pam, you're good. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, first off, I'd like to say good morning to the entire Del Southern Maryland delegation. And, and Stephen, I certainly do appreciate you allowing us to give you this brief. Um, as Delegate Patterson said, my name is Pam Frank, and I'm the Executive Director of the Charles County Military Alliance Council, lovingly known as the MAC. Um, and you've met Steve. Uh, I wanted to give you a little heads up about Steve. He's a former TD, Technical Director down here at the installation in Indian Head for Naval Surface Warfare Center and served as the executive director of NASI up in DC. Um, <laughs> yes, did somebody say something? Oh, no, sorry. Um, because this is our first official briefing to the delegation, um, I'd like to give you a background on the alliances. Um, there are seven major alliances in the state of Maryland. Um, all supported by the Maryland Department of Commerce, Office of Military and Federal Affairs. Those alliances are Fort Detrick, Fort Meade, Aberdeen, Andrews, Pax River, Carter Rock, and Indian Head, the smallest, youngest, and most vulnerable of those all. It was in 2015 that the Department of Commerce asked then president of our Charles County Chamber, Sue Greer, and some others, John Bloom, Brian Kloss, Sheila Zatow, Vince Hungerford, and other community partners and volunteers to stand up the MAC. Since 2015, we have been busy establishing an infrastructure, strategic planning, and creating a sustainable organization. We have also focused on fixing some damaged relationships and forging new ones, as with the other alliances, while providing value to our partners. We've made a commitment to expand and enhance our board of directors. We have brought on new members with vast experience inside the installation. We continue to broaden our footprint with members from academia, local industry, and the chamber. I will not read all the bullets, in, but in looking at this presentation in front of you, um, you will, let's see, let me, Here's the executive committee, the board of directors, and here's, we've, we've established and identified four main strategic plan uh, uh, issues that we are going to take care of. Ab we advocate for the unequal and critical mission of the base. As the Center for Energetics, Indian Head is the Navy's only arsenal. Where do you think the vast majority of the munitions going to Ukraine came from. Little known fact there. Second bullet is we're going to educate the local community about the base mission and impact. The Indian Head is a one billion, with the B, dollar industry. We're going to grow the MAC membership and expand its influence. And we're going to support the military and civilian community at the base. For example, there are almost 500 Marines and sailors stationed on the installation. And you'll, we'll, there's some definite challenges we have in the Indian head as far as amenities and quality of life issues are. So we are going to focus on that. And when you talk about an impact that the MAC has made, and I will read this 
uh, it, with pleasure, read this slide. In the past five years, the MAC has secured more than $2.5 million, benefiting the base, the town, and our local economy. And that includes a, a million plus for the Velocity Center, a million plus for the Maryland Technology Center, 315K for our Oasis Fresh Food Market, our first grocery store in 23 years, and also $50,000 to raise blighted properties. Um, and that's that's what we've done. We're looking forward to increasing that kind of um, benefit to the town and to for the base. And with that, um, I will let Steve pick up because um, you know his leadership, Edith, as you attested, is we're we're really benefiting from that as it is now. But I would like to add one thing, Delegate Patterson. When you get to the Charlotte Hall, I'd like to make one little comment. That's all. Okay, and Steve, okay. there you go. All right, thank you. Um, all right, so can you go to the next the next slide? Yes, thank you. So among the things which are don't necessarily result in funding that we are continuing to work on is is the the align the MAC uh, has the ability to interface with our as we are with you today, with our federal, our state, local delegations, um, and with the Maryland, various Maryland departments in a way that the, that the leadership at the base cannot, given the, the restrictions on lobbying and so on. So that's something that we're focusing on. Uh, also on securing funding uh, by the researching and, and, uh, and marketing of grants that would be a benefit to the local community. Uh, and also, proposing based on identifying the priorities for the bait for the base and its tenants to propose that so that we can try and get those included in uh, in federal priorities uh, as well as as well as the state uh, can you go on to the next one all right um, well we've had we think with with like the uh, US bomb technology Association and others there's been some success in attracting new businesses uh, new entities to Charles County we want to work on this further, um, particularly with the Charles County uh, Economic Development Department, uh, the College of Southern Maryland, and others. Um, we think that there's a real opportunity for the, the science and technology base at, at Indian Head. There's, there's over a thousand scientists and engineers who work for the Warfare Center division there uh, to impact with the Charles County community in improving STEM activities for our, for our uh, K through 12 uh, kids in the county and to entice more of them to want to be interested in this. We think this is critical for the future and it's, and it's important for the future of the division as well because the, if we can get locals who are involved in STEM, they're more likely to stay here than people that, we, that, you, know, that you hire out of some other college. Uh, and, and not last and certainly not least is providing support to the to the Marines of the Chemical Biological Incident Response Force that's stationed there uh, and their families. Um, that we think that's, that's an important effort and, and we, want to, uh, we want to push that further. Okay, the next one. All right, so for our, I've already talked about some of these. For 2023, our focus areas are on increasing our efforts in, in grant research and writing. Um, we want to assist with programs for the tenants of the base, uh, particularly as it, as it comes to advocating for their priorities. Pam mentioned about the Indian Head Division's role and growing role in providing uh, energetics and munitions for, for our warfighters. And, and, but but those, their ability to do that is gonna be dependent on, on both support within DOD and within Congress, as well as we think that as that grows, there's going to be no more need for infrastructure outside the gate to support that because the area of the base is what it is. And given the kind of work that they're doing there, it, it means that you, that you don't necessarily have huge amounts of room for contractors to be, to be in the same area, the same vicinity as the facilities that are actually uh, making a propellant or making an explosive or loading a, a rocket motor, given the, the safety restrictions. We want to strengthen our partnerships with um, the 
others in the area. Uh, for example, we're here today with the Southern Maryland Alliance from St. Mary's County. There's a Patuxent Partnership. We have a little um, glitch there in our spelling, but that's Patuxent Partnership. We want to work more closely with them on development of programming and conferences and, 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 pos and opportunities in this area. And we want to work also on attracting new businesses to the county. I mentioned before, I think the growing role of the, what I see as a growing role for the division in supporting uh, production of munitions, development of production of munitions. And I think that uh, that's going to provide increased opportunities to attract new businesses to the county to support that role. Uh, and lastly, we want, we want to, um, we'd like to increase the membership and the corporate support for the, for the MAC itself in this role. Um, it's not that we're, we're certainly not a money-making operation. Uh, so that's not the, that's not it. But, but if we can increase those, the, that resources, we can, we can increase our impact. Uh, these are some challenges that we want to work on this year that were, that were identified when we hosted the recent state of the station briefing uh, for, for Indian Head and its tenants uh, in January that the various facilities talked about. Um, there's there's uh, traffic issues at, at where 210 dead ends at the front gate at Indian Head. Uh, there the base is the, the uh, Naval Support Facility is, is facing continuing challenges and filling some of its workforce positions, uh, uh, whether it be guards, something as simple as, as uh, uh, lifeguards for the pool during the summertime. And, and also like uh, mechanics to work in the air conditioning and, and other areas. Um, something that's becoming an increasing challenge is electrical ve electric vehicle charging stations. Now that seems mundane, but, it, but it's uh, as more people get them, where are they gonna charge them? Uh, there are currently none on the base itself. Uh, for the NSWC Indian Head Division, the, of course their goals are their inclusion in, the, in industrial base conversations uh, within DOD. Uh, and, and like everybody, they're concerned for the future about workforce and space, um, the space for their people, but also the recruitment and retention of, the, of, of their workforce. And it's not just gonna be scientists and engineers, it's also gonna be uh, skilled technicians. Uh, you, don't, you don't operate advanced uh, 420 gallon mixers unless you have um, mechanics who are knowledgeable about computer systems and all the controls that go with them. For CBRF, the chemical biological, this is the Marines. Um, they've got, you know, the town amenities are something that uh, for their young Marines, by and large, you know, the, the, the people that in that detachment are, they're, you know, 20 to 25. Um, and so the amenities that would provide them with something to do outside of their duty hours. Uh, they also have a requirement for them to be able to participate in volunteer activities. And then of course, activities and social events. Right. So um, I guess what we'd like to, to say is, is that uh, we appreciate this opportunity to talk to you today. And, and we look forward to your help in, in in obtaining the resources to, um, to improve those situations where the community can, can help the base to meet its mission in a better fashion. Uh, it doesn't, you, you're not gonna, you know, the local delegation, there's nothing, you can't do something about funding a program in, in energetics or something, but, you, but there may be opportunities where we can deal with some of those, those issues that we just talked about that the, that the base and its tenants brought up at our state of the station, where where those would they would improve the ability of the base to meet its mission for the future. Um, and just a couple of pictures here. This is these are um, a lot of these photos are from the recent um, event where Pam and the local community came together to provide a, a meal at one o'clock in the morning for the Seabird attachment when they return from supporting the State of the Union event at the Capitol, uh, as they do every year. And finally, just a picture of, of our young Marines there. So thank you. And are there any questions? 
<clears throat> well, thank you. Um, let me see if there are hands. All right, I do have a question. Um, first of all, thank you for both uh, Steve and Pam for the presentation. I really um, uh, am focusing on the current challenges because I think that that is really helpful for us as legislators. And I have a question as it relates to um, when you talk about unfilled workforce positions. Uh, is there any kind of collaboration with the uh, um, Charles County Board of Ed um, because they have, of course, um, workforce training at North Point High School as well as, as well as other opportunities and with CSM with their technology program that they have over in Hughesville? Are there any kinds of official, unofficial um, programs of cooperation. Well, Pam, do you want to contribute to that? Well, currently, well, currently there are no like partnerships with the MAC and any of these organizations. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know that workforce development is, is something that everybody's talking about. I mean, you know, uh, the guys from PACs are going to talk about their workforce 2030. I mean, it is, it's really a, an issue. And, and it's something we're going to have to bring everybody together to try to address. Um, I know Steve has been um, talking about some ideas uh, that, um, you know, some partnerships with the, with the school board and things like that. Um, but we're in very early kind of developmental kind of discussions. Okay. <clears throat> Why don't we look at that over the interim for us interim this after April 11th? <laughs> um, because to me it's a win-win and not all of this, if you look at the blueprint uh, that we passed a few years ago, not everyone is going to go to college, but certainly when you think about careers and yet it's a win-win because there are students who could really fill, fulfill some of these positions that are going open. Um, also, there's a boys and girls club in the Indian head that just started. Um, so I'm not sure if any of the uh, service members would be interested in volunteering with them, but that's certainly uh, something to consider as well. Edith, I'm also on a um, on the steering committee with the Judy Center and the community um, school uh, group, and there's lots of conversations going on with that. So yeah, and the Boys and Girls Club has been um, a success. Okay. All right. I don't see any hands. Um, so we hope that we'll continue moving forward. And thank you for that very, very informative um, presentation. You're right. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is Tom Garrison. Uh, Tom is a Southern Maryland Naval Alliance Incorporated president. Uh, in other words, he's with Patch Fervor. And he will bring us information um, on the Southern Maryland Naval Alliance a fiscal year 24 priorities. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. How can everybody hear me? We can. Um, thank you for the introduction, Madam Chair. Really appreciate the time today. Um, I'm the president of the Southern Maryland Navy Alliance for a few months now, uh, 26 years, a retired naval aviator. 15 years with industry, and I love Southern Maryland. Uh, I brought with me today Dale Moore. Uh, we call Dale the, the Naval Aviation Strategist. Uh, he has uh, an awful lot of insight on innovation, uh, centers of excellence, and a lot of training uh, efficiencies uh, with a long career with, with Naval Air Systems Command. Um, technically challenged, I'm going to shift as best I can over to share my screen and entire screen boom can anybody see my slides dale give me a thumbs up yeah all right um we're going to talk a little bit about priorities and uh, talk a little bit about pax river uh, just as a refresher uh, 
for folks that may not have been way down to the end of the tip of the peninsula for the last few years. We've been around for 80 years uh, as Pax River as a base. Um, the Navy, Navy Alliance, though, was only established in 1992 in, in reaction to threats of BRAC. Um, we market ourselves as one of the oldest defense community organizations in the country, covering 14,000 acres, 50 tenant organizations, both military and, and civilian uh, contractors, uh, over 8 million square feet of facilities, 10 hangars, five very busy runways, uh, over 33,000 jobs, 12,000 in or near PACs. And, and a thing I'll say about that, uh, folks, is that 20% of the folks that work on Pax River in St. Mary's County are residents of Calvert County and over 3% are residents of Charles County. So we're indeed a, an amalgamation of Southern Maryland and glad to have it that way. We celebrate it uh, on Maryland Day. Um, you see the wages noted there, uh, a pretty large number uh, considering the procurement of services and material, but most of it is outside of Maryland. Uh, we keep about 1.3 billion in procurement and services in the state of Maryland, obviously in Southern Maryland. Um, and the pictures on the right uh, denote both the, uh, the history and the two major commands that are here today. Two seconds on the history. Uh, you may of course remember State Senator J. Frank Raley who helped found the Navy Alliance in 1992. Um, we were focused on workforce development, community relations, and the Naval Air Museum, which we still find very dear. In the mid-90s, we started latching on to Representative Hoyer from the 5th District, and um, his enthusiasm helped us grow our research and development capacity nicely with things like anechoic uh, deadening uh, systems, uh, signal chambers, and other facilities. In 95, uh, the consolidation started to occur for Nav Air when the uh, facilities up in Trenton, Lakehurst, and Warminster, Pennsylvania made their way to Pax River. Um, that, of course, as you guys can imagine, solidified our uh, consolidation and strength during the BRAC. Um, in 96, uh, as Steve and Pam alluded to, the Pax partnership was born as a spinoff from the Navy Alliance. And the PACS partnership is, is uh, proud of its heritage of bringing uh, relevant speakers, uh, both in the military and the civilian realm, to PACS River. Uh, on any given uh, Wednesday night, you can see a crowd at the museum, still forever holding dear our museum with great speakers. And we, we invite you guys to participate in that if you ever find the time. Um, in 1998, NAVAIR headquarters shifted from Crystal City to Pax River. My order said Washington, D.C., and, and that's where I thought I was headed, uh, but I ultimately shifted gears and came to Pax River back in 1998. Um, Three-year orders, and here, uh, many years later, I'm still in St. Mary's County. In 1999, Brigadier General Mike Hayes uh, became the first director of Maryland's Office of Military and Federal Affairs, uh, politely known as OMFA, and um, that aligned us with the MMIC, which is part of our affiliation with Pam and Steve today, and we appreciate that. You'll note our mission, support, promote, and enhance uh, Southern Maryland and Pax River. And I am a great, uh, and I really like to emphasize the Southern Maryland part as we align with our teammates in the next two counties. Our objectives are clear. Keep our, keep our costs down. Make sure that we're not uh, gouging the taxpayers of the country, but providing the defense that's required. We prioritize our tech center and our heritage because we become world class with regard to uh, test and evaluation of weapons and air systems. We also strive to get new missions, think artificial intelligence, uh, UAVs, new customers, think uh, TSA, um, special forces realms. Um, we also focus on defending against encroachment, not just the encroachment of buildings and roads, but the encroachment of a base by signals and and interruptions to uh, daily operations in our electronic environment. We partner locally and across our regions. We're proud of the partnerships that we have with the folks uh, on board today um, in the counties that are our sister counties. Uh, with Dale at the helm, we drive innovation and centers of excellence. Uh, I noted the UAV um, future. We have a, 
an operation center. If it was a test center, now it's an operation center. That's how far UAVs have advanced. Um, that is located near the airport today here in the, in Southern Maryland. And of course, like a lot of us, we're working on building tomorrow's workforce. And in fact, we're taking some pretty hefty strides to do just that. And then we'll talk about it toward the end. Uh, here's some fun pic pictures from our uh, annual dinner. Uh, this captures the board. Um, like a lot of entities, we're divided up into several uh, committees. Uh, you may recognize the names. Chris Casalamus is running economic development. Uh, Mr. Kevin Swidick of Avian Corporation has our government relations lead. Uh, workforce development with the proud 2030 SOMD um, workforce project is under Dottie Simeona, who's an uh, executive with Booz Allen Hamilton. And Dale works our strategy uh, with a small group to uh, uh, advance what we're going to be doing in the years to come. I'll note that... Uh, we don't just come to, to 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 play, we come to stay. If you look in the background on this, you'll see a handful of uh, Navy captains, admirals, and senior government officials uh, to include uh, former uh, ASNRDA Deputy Dan Nega that continue to support the Alliance well after um, it has been the, their main focus of employment. A couple of federal priorities that we've highlighted um, and I just wanted to make note of. Uh, we've identified that the NAV Air and, and Naval Air Warfare Center uh, Aircraft Division uh, wanted to emphasize the joint simulation environment, integrated naval capability, which gives our, our squadrons and aviators the opportunity to work with the latest threats and the realistic world uh, advances in, in warfare. And we optimize the Atlantic test range by making sure that that's up to date with a very um, realistic simulation realm. Uh, we also identified seven million for the Air Combat Environment Test Evaluation Center uh, for the newest generation of electronic warfare, both uh, uh, defensive as far as listening for signals as well as offenses of it, in shutting down the electronic systems of our enemies. Um, that, that's a big focus at ACETEF. And then uh, a million and a half for future workforce uh, efforts in Southern Maryland, labeled Southern Maryland 2030. In fact, we think that will go up to 2 million. Um, I'm going to call on Dale to speak a little bit and in a second about the actual Southern Maryland 2030 uh, initiative itself. But simply stated, we focus on high school and collegiate level uh, players that can uh, aspire to jobs to support uh, naval aviation and the testing that goes on and supporting that aspect of our government. Um, finally, we wanted to make sure that we have the, the priorities in play for prioritizing militaries, construction, mil cons. And here are three of the, uh, the wish list items, an updated prototype facility, expansion of the aforementioned anechoic chamber, and the Atlantic Test Range Air Wing of the Future Live Virtual Construct Advancements, which is you, you know, use your imagination to imagine the connectivity between simulators and live aircraft. State priorities. This is where I say thank you, thank you, thank you to delegates like Brian Crosby and C.T. Wilson. They've secured two and a half million uh, for SCIFs, both here in St. Mary's County and right there where you are, ma'am, in Charles County. Uh, we think this is I believe this to be part of a larger comprehensive bond program, but we just could not do this without the support of those delegates. Um, and uh, we, we emulate uh, successful states that have had bond bills supporting similar uh, entities and we cheated off Massachusetts uh, paper a little bit. I wanna say thanks to everyone. You noted, um, ma'am, that the governor is a military man. Um, and we, we think he's uh, been very supportive of the Keep Our Heroes Home Act, which will give tax uh, breaks for military retirement um, so that we can stop the mass exodus from Southern Maryland of retired military personnel. Um, I go to retirement after retirement after retirement, and the only question is, when do you leave for Florida? So nice place, but uh, it's not getting the job done and not keeping people in place. One of the specific things that we're working on with uh, MMIC folks like uh, Amy O'Donnell are projects like work license reciprocity for military spouses so that someone doesn't show up in Southern Maryland for a military duty 
and it, the, their spouse not have an opportunity to gain work because they don't have license uh, reciprocity from the state from which they came. We also mentioned uh, investment. We, this is state of the station. The station uh, type investments is that we're focused on using things like DSIP and, uh, and bonds or to improve access roads to make sure that we're able to share threat con information with signage and things like that. Um, and then finally, uh, the highlight of our, of our current um, moment within the Alliance is Southern Maryland Workforce 2030, uh, spoken to by Pam a little bit. We are uh, going through a two year journey right now wherein we have uh, 40 high school, 40 plus high school kids in apprenticeships with the local tech center, the James Forrest Tech Center over on Route 5. Um, and we're expanding that apprenticeship. And we're also adding internships funded by the federal government, their paychecks will be, for as many as 40 interns at the collegiate level working for local naval aviation focused industry um, right here in St. Mary's County and then stretching over the course of the next several months into Charles and to Calvert County as well. So 2022 behind us, we had a good one. Um, we launched the initiative that I just spoke of and I'll get Dale to speak to. Um, we have a, a, a blossoming Aero Park Innovation District uh, with uh, fun signage and lots of activity. Um, and if you if you pay attention in uh, on Airport Road, you may see a UAV fly by someday or even a plane headed towards somewhere near Ukraine. Um, we've had real good exposure of our smart building, Southern uh, Maryland. Um, uh, Dale can give you the rest of the acumen, but basically it's a technical building where we do uh, technical research type training and are inviting uh, Maryland colleges to uh, have presence to provide degree to education there in St. Mary's, here in St. Mary's County. And ma'am, we were very proud on the 22nd of October last year to have as our annual guest speaker, Secretary of the Navy and Naval Academy graduate, Carlos Del Toro, um, who came and spoke to us about a handful of wonderful things uh, from his post in the Navy. And the last thing I'll say is it's all about the future. Our support for local youth with STEM competitions, AUVSI, uh, airframe competitions, uh, mentoring, and the internships, uh, we were completely focused on the future. And uh, I will be a granddad here in a couple of months. So uh, I'm excited about the future. And I want to make sure everybody else is excited as well. Um, Dale, uh, if I could call on you to just add one little piece of icing on the cape. Uh, anything that you want to say about Workforce 2030 initiative uh, for Ms. Patterson? Yeah, we're, we're working very, thank you, Tom. Uh, we're working very closely with the base um, to, to integrate a number of different internship opportunities. The uh, apprenticeship program, we're actually doubling uh, the number of people through the Forest Center, which, which is huge. And this, this applies directly to the support of the base, the hands-on work that needs to, to occur to support the operations. Um, we're, um, we have two years of funding that we're setting up for the Southern Maryland 2030 that is focused specifically on the apprenticeships and the internships. Our, our big ask here is we want to sustain that effort over time. Uh, the PACS partnership is, is leading the execution of that on contract with PACS River, the money flowed through NOC AD, um, and they are doing a spectacular job. Uh, just really spectacular, and we want to keep that momentum up. I think, Tom, we had something like 170 internship applicants and somewhere around 30, 35 companies that have volunteered to come forward for this. Right. So we're, we're looking at kind of, a, I'll call it a co-evolution between what's outside the gate and inside the gate and building that synergy that's going on. I just want to add also, Tom, if it's okay, that stands for Southern Maryland Autonomous Research and Technology Building. And I knew that. Yeah, <laughs> the beauty of autonomy is that it covers a broad range of STEM disciplines to enable that function. And, and this building is, you know, it's an 84,000 square foot facility. It's state of the art. We've had a number of, of major events there already. We're building the curriculums that we're going to have going forward. And it ties right in with the UAS test site that we have at the Aero Park as well. 
And then the Aero Park is an official innovation district that Chris Kesselimus has been driving. So really exciting time for us. We're looking toward the future. This is kind of what it looks like. Um, very proud to share this UCAB, which was one of Dale's uh, technical uh, inventions. Um, no, no, he didn't do all that much, but uh, it, <laughs> we, we call it Dale's baby. Um, that's, uh, that's our story. Uh, we're very proud and humbled to be added to the, uh, to the roster today. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions or discussion, um, ma'am? I'm looking for hands and uh, I just want to share. Well, first of all, thank you for a very, both of you, for a very comprehensive um, uh, presentations. Uh, but most of all, for providing us with your priorities and your challenges, because that will help us as we plan for um, 2024. Uh, I wanted to give you an update on House Bill. Uh, 554, it passed uh, the House unanimously, 139 to zero, which is great. And um, we, we hear your concern, uh, concerns regarding keeping our military service forces and their skills and expertise here in Maryland. So that's, that's a small step in, in meeting that goal. Uh, full disclosure, I will also say that my my goddaughter, my granddaughter, she calls me grandma, but she's my goddaughter. Janae Lincolns is a doctoral student who's at PAX. She does, she's doing her internship in mechanical engineering with wow. her. And uh, I believe she's been there for almost two years, but we're very pleased. She's very pleased uh, with that opportunity. As I said before, she's with the University of Maryland College Park. That's great. That's great to hear. And are there any questions of the colleagues? We would, uh, I would like to, I haven't visited uh, uh, Pax River in a while, but uh, maybe over the interim uh, colleagues, we can visit both entities, both bases. Um, there was no mention of Dalgren, uh, so I don't want to get into that, but when you think of Indian Head, I believe Dalgren is still part of that. Is that correct, um, Steve? So uh, Dahlgren and Indian Head, both of them, the Naval Support Facility South Potomac is, uh, is the, I'll say, say the, the host for both okay. Dahlgren and Indian Head. So yes, they both, so Captain, uh, Captain Coleman, who is the CO for the CNIC CO for uh, the NSF South Potomac, he's responsible for the land and the, as both facilities. Thank you. I'm not sure where um, the how's the companion bill on the Senate side is. I don't know, Senator Bailey. Uh, was it cross file or was it just in the House? Senator uh, Senator uh, Jackson Kelly Patterson. Yes. So you are you speaking to the licensure bill or are you speaking to the keep our heroes home? It's keep our heroes home. Uh, that is passed out of the. Senate as uh, it came over from the House. Oh, that's great. Uh, and, as, so, and as far as the licensure uh, bill, mm -hmm. um, that bill, uh, we are working on getting that out of finance committee. I am still working on that. Okay. Uh, so we have been um, working that. And look, and we, and, and if I might, Madam Chair, uh, we are we are proud to be partners of our uh, military installations. Um, I'm, I'm proud. Uh, uh, to uh, to tout that we have uh, what we believe is the largest veterans caucus in the United States, so at, at least seventy four members, uh, and we are very. Uh, Did I lose him? We're very, I can say we're very diverse uh, in terms of women and men, and that is great. It is one of the largest. Uh, so, uh, it, Marines, having some a little bias. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, then it is only has to be signed by the governor, and we know he's going to sign it, uh, that it will become law. Uh, we also have, in terms of military families, uh, a bill uh, that was cross-filed with myself and Senator Guile. It had to do with um, daycare centers uh, to make sure that there was no duplication of requirements for 
the uh, opening of daycare centers and with the Department of Ed. And so that too passed, I believe it's going to pass, it passed our house. So I believe it also passed the Senate. So we're waiting for that to help families and also to help people who are interested in having centers on base. Okay. If there are no other questions, again, we look forward to visiting your, your sites. And thank you very much for being on with us this morning. Um, on yesterday, uh, when we met with the governor, uh, and I'd also met with um, a representative from the, from the veteran secretary of the veteran's office uh, about Charlotte Hall, um, they are working on resolving this issue. Let me just say this. Um, I believe, Kara, that everyone would have, would have, everyone will have a copy or should have a copy of the issue summary briefing on the Shoulder Hall Veterans Home Management Services contract. Yes. And then, okay. So if you look at that, I will just simply highlight that um, HMR of Maryland LLC was a contractor that had been in place since 2002. Um, and they received, over the years, a decrease in their rating. So much so that for Maryland, at the end, they had only a one star out of five rating. And that was also noted in operations in South Carolina, as well as in Texas. Um, the abuses in Maryland are really heart wrenching, wrenching really because of the severity of them and abuse higher than average health citations and low quality measures, et cetera. Uh, so in taking office, um, Secretary Anthony Woods, as well as the governor, uh, were made aware of the documents. And so uh, they are, there are several actions in place. Again, uh, it's cited, I'm just reading from my notes, or the notes that were provided to me, and that um, there are from, yeah, uh, they are in regular communications with the Department of the Veterans Affairs, Department of Health, St. Mary's County Health Department regarding um, Charlotte Hall, and um, and January 18th, uh, um, they received an emergency declaration approval from the Office of State Procurement to allow the department to conduct emergency procurements to address the situation. And it goes on and on and on. So currently, uh, March 8th, which is earlier this, this month, uh, Kara, why are you, can you switch over? Okay. What do you need? Okay, you're good. Uh, March 8th, um, the NDA issued an emergency procurement RFP to identify a contractor to temporarily assume the operations and management at Charlotte Hall. So that's where we are. Our proposals are due by March 31st with an anticipated award date of April 14th and an anticipated start date of April 17th. And that timeline will allow for uh, preparation. That's all that I know at this point. Um, I'm sure there are questions about what is released, what is said, because of the delicate situation. And I certainly appreciate everyone who have offered, you know, their support and um, their concerns regarding the care of our service members. Pam, did you say you wanted to make a comment? You're muted. You would think after three years, we'd learn the technology of these Zoom meetings. I apologize. Okay. Um, it, it's uh, not that, not appropriate uh, with the topic that you're talking about, but it's far about veterans in general. Um, I just, one of the things that we're trying to work on and we're we're doing some research and advocating for a veterans resource center in the western part of the county. Mm -hmm. So that's that's another thing we needed to add to our to do with list. But I wanted you to be aware of that because you know when the bond initiatives 
come right. up again, things like that. So you'll be seeing us. <laughs> 2024. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I've also made an inquiry regarding the Veterans Center Lounge at CSM. Uh, I've called and called and have not really gotten a response. So uh, remember, it was financed. It was um, uh, touted as an opportunity for veterans to get together, but with the pandemic, sort of closed down. So we will keep looking at that. Okay. I will make a follow-up call if you like. Please do. Okay. okay. My colleagues, are there any questions or comments? Uh, if not, once more, I want to thank you for being in attendance. And um, we only have a few more weeks left in session. Uh, but again, uh, we will be working uh, over the interim to address some of the concerns. So thank you very much. And Happy Maryland Day. Happy Maryland's Day. Thank you. Yes, happy Maryland.